Well, welcome everyone. Glad you're here. It is time for morning prayer here at St. Peter's and uh, we're honored to have you in our midst. This is an, a lovely day, um, mostly because, well, to be honest, mostly because it's Lancelot Andrews Day, because outside here in New Jersey, it is just manky, and uh, we're kind of done with that. But uh, just to tell you a little bit about Lancelot Andrews and this incredible picture, which is just overwhelming in the dignity and the gravitas, um, and we also uh, were remarking on the rather uh, intense lace of his Rashid Shamir and, and neck ruff. You can really tell that it's uh, an Elizabethan slash uh, sort of Stuart era. So he was a, uh, a divine, a clergy person, uh, 1550s to the mid 1600s. Uh, he was also, along with James Usher, thought of as one of the most learned churchmen of his day. And uh, he was an, an eloquent and impassioned preacher. Uh, he was he held three diocesan sees, uh, ultimately culminating in Winchester. He was uh, a favorite of James the First of England, and truly just a remarkable figure of the day. He is listed uh, as first among those tasked with translating the authorized version of the Bible, which we know as the King James Version, and also uh, his prayers and preces. Um, his private prayers are uh, one of the treasures of the uh, of the late English Reformation. Uh, he is listed uh, as a uh, as a figure who was one of the first fellows, I believe, of Jesus College uh, in Oxford upon its founding, and uh, he was one who was without privity, which means that he was so esteemed by his colleagues that he was basically given the post out of their high estimation that they held for him. He also has an academic cap named after him. It's the one he's actually shown wearing. Uh, it's a mortarboard, but made of velvet, the floppy hat, if you've seen that. It's called the Bishop Andrews cap. So uh, another little bit for you. And uh, truly just a remarkable figure. One of my favorite stories is that he is, uh, and this is a legend and, and a bit of a, of a, of a, of a sort of, apocryphal story is that he was devoted to his intercessory prayers and would often spend the entire morning praying for people and uh in that regard uh he would also he was also known to weep during his prayers so not in this picture but in others he's often depicted uh, amongst the translators of the bible as holding a handkerchief so there you have it we're remembering bishop Lancelot Andrews. And I was just telling Jacqueline, my family is so Anglican that uh, my first cat growing up was named Lancelot. So there you have it. All right. Remembering Lancelot Andrews and we're ready for morning prayer. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up. Let us know your prayer concerns. Hello, Catherine, Art, and Betty. Glad to have you with us in the virtual space. And uh, Jacqueline, we're ready to go. You all set? All right. Here we go. Time for morning prayer. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God, you are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, 
and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today you would heart, we would hearken to your voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. The first half of Psalm 78, please join me by responding with the even verses. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us, we will not hide from their hide them from their children. We will tell to them, we will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. God established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which the Lord commanded our ancestors to teach to their children. That the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children. So that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep the Lord's commandments. And that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to God's law. They forgot what the Lord had done and the miracles that God had shown them. In the sight of their ancestors, God worked marvels in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. The Lord divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the waters stand like a heap. In the daytime, God led them with a cloud and all night long with a fiery light. The Lord split rocks open in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. God made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against the Lord rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though God struck the rock so that the water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can God also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard, God was full of rage. A fire was kindled against Jacob. Anger mounted against Israel. Because they had no faith in God and did not trust God's saving power. Yet the Lord commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. God rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate the bread of angels. God sent them food in abundance. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by God's power, he let out the south wind. The Lord rained flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the seas. The Lord let them fall within their camp all around their dwellings. And they ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths. The anger of God rose against them, and the Lord killed the strongest of them and laid low the flower of Israel. In spite of all this, they still sinned. They did not believe in the Lord's wonders. So God made their days vanish like a breath and their years in terror. When God killed them, they sought for him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high, their redeemer. But they flattered God with their mouths. They lied to the Lord with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward God. They were not true to the Lord's covenant. Yet God, being compassionate, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Often God restrained God's anger and did not stir up all God's wrath. The Lord remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and does not come again. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When Naaman had gone from him a short distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, thought, my master has let that Aramean Naaman off too lightly by not accepting from him what he offered. As the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something out of him. So Gehazi went after Naaman. When Naaman saw someone running after him, he jumped down from the chariot to meet him and said, is everything all right? He replied, yes, but my master has sent me to say, Two members of a company of prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of clothing. Naaman said, please accept two talents. He urged him and tied up two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of clothing and gave them to two of his servants who carried them in front of Gehazi. When he came to the citadel, he took the bags from them and stored them inside. He dismissed the men and they left. He went in and stood before his master and Elisha said to him, where have you been Gehazi? He answered, your servant has not gone anywhere at all. But he said to him, did I not go with you in spirit when someone left his chariot to meet you? Is this a time to accept money and to accept clothing, olive orchards and vineyards, sheep and oxen and male and female slaves? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. So he left his presence leprous as white as snow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is a song of pilgrimage. Together. Before I ventured forth, even while I was very young, I sought wisdom openly in my prayer. In the four courts of the temple, I asked for her, and I will seek her to the end. From first blossom to early fruit, she has been the delight of my heart. My foot has kept firmly to the true path. Diligently from my youth have I pursued her. I inclined my ear a little and received her. I found for myself much wisdom and became adept in her. To the one who gives me wisdom will I give glory, for I have resolved to live according to her way. From the beginning I gained courage from her, therefore I will not be forsaken. In my inmost being I have been stirred to seek her, therefore have I gained a good possession. As my reward, the Almighty has given me the gift of language, and with it will I offer praise to God. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not found even among pagans. For a man is living with his father's wife and you are arrogant. Should you not rather have mourned so that the one who has done this would have been removed from among you? For though absent in body, I am present in spirit. And as if present, I have already pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus on the man who has done such a thing. When you are assembled and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not a good thing. Do you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Clean out the old yeast so that you may, may be a new batch, as you really are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is a song of God's love. Together. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God has, was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through Jesus Christ. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son that sins might be forgiven. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another, for if we love one another, 
God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. We shall never hope in vain. Perfect in us, almighty God, whatever is lacking of your gifts, of faith to increase it, of hope to establish it, of love to kindle it, that like your servant, Lancelot Andrews, may we may live in the life of your grace and glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for. Amen. Don't know how I muted. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. Prayers this morning for Murphy, who goes into New York on Friday to start her bone marrow transplant. Prayers for the team watching out for her. Prayers also for all those children, especially who are battling cancer. For all the doctors who are doing research to put an end to childhood cancer and for all the families that are affected by it. We ask for strength and grace and wisdom. Amen. Amen. Pray for all who are struggling with chronic challenges to their health, particularly those who struggle with pain and the management of their suffering. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Ahoada, the Church of Nigeria, and the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverend Catherine Korzik. Wick, Wick Zorik. I always get that wrong. Sorry, Catherine. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We appreciate your presence. Go forth, learn something in the honor of Lancelot Andrews. If you've got a King James Version of the Bible, and I'm taking it out and read some of it. He worked hard on that. Honor the man. And all things know that it's been a great pleasure to have you here and to be able to welcome you home to St. Peter's. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, grab that next cup of coffee, enjoy if you can being cozy today because outside is just miserable. And of course, if you're following us on Facebook, continue to do so, share us with your friends, give us those thumbs ups, thumbs up. And uh, I know it was plural, plural. I didn't know why I did that. And then of course, we'll be back on for evening prayer this evening at 5 p.m. For now, dear friends, take care and God bless. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.